Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again here on my channel and hopefully on the Random FIFA Videos channel as well with the second instalment of the World Cup Squads series. Now the first one went down tremendously well. Of course we did Cameroon, we're going through Group A to start off with. Of course if you're, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the series, you missed the first episode, there will be a link to that in the bottom left hand corner. But basically the gist of the series is, we're going to go through the, uh, the World Cup Squads group at a time, team at a time, I'm going to build a uh, squad builder, a national squad builder with each, then uh, we'll go through each individual nation's World Cup history. There isn't too much of an emphasis on the actual squad builder itself, although uh, you, I will flick through all of the players in the background so you guys can see the, uh, the individual stats of the players on show. Uh, the main player in this one, of course, is Javier Hernandez. I was going to try and uh, put a squad together with uh, with the informs of Giovanni Dos Santos and Carlos Vaya, but of course, that would have meant I would have to leave Peralta and Javier Hernandez is out and I didn't really want to do that so I've put those guys out on the wing so we could have uh, Chikorito and the other in form uh, Santos Laguna striker up top but uh, a couple of other decent players in there of course Salcedo used to play in the Premier League as well he is the left central defensive midfielder we're having a look at now and of course there is of course there is as well Hector Moreno who uh, plays for Espanyol is a very very solid centre back so uh, the goalkeeper by the way Okua absolutely awful do not touch him if you're trying to build uh, a squad similar to this or any squad with him in whatsoever don't go anywhere near him he's one of the worst goalkeepers I've ever used in my entire life but anyway let's crack on with Mexico's World Cup history then shall we are going to have a closer look and see what they're all about now they've qualified for twice as many World Cups as uh, the previous side we had a look at in Group A Cameroon Cameroon of course qualified for seven Mexico have qualified 14 times for the biggest stage in world football and uh, Rio 2014 will actually be their sixth consecutive appearance at, uh, at the World Cup they've qualified for every single tournament since 1994 which was of course held in the USA but Mexico themselves have held the World Cup twice in 1970 when uh, Brazil went on to win the World Cup and in 1986 when Argentina were uh, were victorious thanks in no small part to uh, to the arm of a very small number 10 for Argentina but that again is uh, is a discussion for a different video but um, of course every World Cup held on South American soil has been won by a South American team so you would presume that is going to uh, continue when we uh, when we go to Rio next year, can Mexico be the team to uh, to keep up that tradition? We will have to wait and see. But of course, their uh, their two most successful tournaments were the ones held on domestic soil. They reached the quarterfinals in both 1970 and 1986. Now, uh, most recently, they've been knocked out in uh, in the round of 16 in every single one of those six consecutive World Cups that they've competed in since USA 94. We've got USA 94, France 98. Uh, was it Japan and South Korea 2002, Germany 2006, and then of course South Africa 2010. Now in South Africa 2020, 20, bleh, in South Africa 2010, most recently of course they were knocked out by Argentina in the in the round of 16 as we've said but uh, of course that again was thanks to a dodgy goal from uh, from the Argentinian side if you cast your mind back you may be able to remember Carlos Tevez actually scored the first goal in that game ended up 3-1 but Tevez's goal was the was the opening goal they put Argentina 1-0 up and he scored it from an offside position and there was a huge huge uh, you know debate amongst the uh, the world football public as to whether the, uh, the was it a Uruguayan official the Uruguayan linesman whether there was any sort of match fixing involved but of course that was never found to have any truth in it whatsoever but it still was a dodgy Argentinian goal at a World Cup but uh, we'll have a look at some of the uh, the other miscellaneous stats from Mexico that top goal scorer for the national side is actually Jared or Jared Borgetti uh, he retired from international football only as recently as 2008 he was in the national side from 2000 from 1997 rather to, uh, to 2008 11 years of service scored 46 goals for, for his national side. This isn't as many as Sammy Leto, scored 55 for Cameroon. We uh, we covered that in the previous episode, but still, 46 goals for your national side is nothing to be sneered at, and their uh, their highest appearance guy actually has more than Cameroon. We had uh, Rigobert Song, had like 130 or so for, uh, for Cameroon, and actually Mexico's highest appearance getter Highest appearance getter, is that even a phrase? Highest appearance, highest cap winner, shall we say, is Claudio Suarez, uh, with 178 in total across uh, a span of 14 years from 1992 to 2006. So you would say their best players in uh, in Mexican national history are the most recent ones, so perhaps they do stand a chance of doing well at Rio 2014, although their qualifying campaign wasn't the best. Of course, they went through in the playoffs against uh, New Zealand to uh, rather easy games for them. They did score quite a lot of goals over the two legs, but 
Uh, Mexico as a whole, their recent form hasn't been that good. And as a prediction for the uh, for their performance in Rio 2014, I actually think they're not going to make it through to the round of 16 this time. I do see Mexico getting knocked out in the group stage. Of course, the other teams in their group are the hosts, Brazil, Croatia, who we'll be covering next week, and uh, Cameroon, who of course we covered last week. So uh, I personally, I think Mexico will either come third or fourth. I think it's a toss-up between them and Cameroon for the third and fourth positions in that group. It could go either way. Cameroon are very, very solid, but if Mexico turn up and perform like we know they can with the, the with the players at their disposal, then uh, they may stand a chance of, uh, of pushing Croatia out of second place, but I don't quite think they're going to be able to put the form together, and I do personally believe that they're going to finish third or fourth in that group. But that is going to bring this particular episode to a close, guys. Of course, like I say, we will be covering Croatia next week. That will be the next one in Group A, and then, of course, Brazil will be the one after that. But that's going to bring this episode to a close, so please do feel free to show the video as much support as you did with the previous one. Drop the, drop the video a like if you did enjoy. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think of this series, and if you're enjoying it so far I'm personally really really enjoying putting it together so uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying watching it as well and uh, if you aren't subscribed to my channel as well do feel free to do so there will be a link in the description to do so my channel name is Chesnoid Gaming and uh, if you're watching this around random FIFA videos as well then feel free to subscribe to that channel the community channel there's plenty of FIFA content coming up on there every single day from various uh, FIFA commentators so there are plenty of channels for you to discover on that community channel but that as I say, is going to bring this one to a close. So uh, we'll have to wait and see how Mexico do at the World Cup. But uh, we'll cover Croatia next week. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you next time.